Both of them. Put both of them in, look. Come on, straight in. I'll tell you what, you'll probably bring it back. you probably be wrong with this. <laughs> be fine, mate. Be fine. Shower screen day. We all have shower screen days. For some reason, I just hate bloody shower screens. But when I start doing them, I don't mind them. Just the thought of going to do it and farting around with all these bits and you have to have loads of area to lay it out. And Anyway, I've just picked it up from uh, Plum Base. So heading over to this job where the, the builder basically washed their hands of the job. So the client, they're only 18 month old these houses. So the clients had to get their own plumber in to take out the original shower screen because it's just leaking from everywhere and uh, refit a new one. So I'm just heading over there now and we'll get the old one out and uh, see what's what, see what's going on with it. So this is the shower screen that's coming out. Um, basically the, the company that built the house just haven't fitted it right or it's a crap screen, but it's leaking from the bottom sill. The top isn't level. Um, it's just not great to be fair. So we're gonna take this one out and refit a new one that's um, it's a bit more suitable for the job. Right, so we've got the profiles off. I took all the, the bolts out of here and this side. So in essence, the screen is now ready to come out. I just cut the, the silicon around the bottom and this door should come off and the side profile should come out and get it all cleaned up um, and, see, and see where we're at then get the other one out and, and lay it down and go from there. So, the kitchen knife we use behind the profile to get it off. There you go, little plumbing hack, courtesy of Tom Holton. The kitchen knife behind the back of the profile, slice the silicon off. So there we go, we all best get down uh, Wilco's and get one of them in the tool bag. Right, now I've got to get rid of all the silicon, so just get a standing knife blade, scrape it all off. Get it all as clean as you can. poking a little head around the corner right we'll clean the shower I've got the majority of the silicon off the shower tray so we'll clean it down but I've got some big wipes here and it's ground in dirt on the shower tray it just goes to show how good's that big up to big wipes so we'll clean that there clean all this off clean the walls up we can start refitting the new screen. So where the original screen's gone in and the profile, they haven't silicon behind that. So we're gonna silicon behind there and silicon behind that one as well. We've still got these holes, so we'll just fill them with some gray silicon just to seal them up. So I've put a bead of silicon down the inside of the profile. So now that profile will go up there. And with the bead of silicon up it, it just keeps it watertight. So that's the profile fitted. So now we'll put the side door in, the side screen in, into this corner, and then put the pivot door on. But don't bolt anything in yet. Don't screw any of the profiles in place yet, i.e. into the into the side panel. So the screen's now in and it's screwed through at these points here. So the frame's actually bolted in now. Everything's bolted in so it's solid. All we've got to do now is seal around the outside, put the weatherproofing strips on. 
all the waterproofing strips, handle, and uh, leave it to go off then. All right, so we go. New screens in, sealed in, um, all ready to go. So they'll leave it over. Clock customer will leave it overnight for it to to go off for the ceiling to go off, and then um, ready for tomorrow. Reports of oh, the radiator leaking. So if we just put your hand on it and wobble it, as you'll see, just dead loose. It looks like it's not been taped up under here. It's just so loose, it's probably not even put in tight either, to be fair. So what we're gonna have to do is turn it off, take the towel rail off, Unfortunately, it's a big, massive one because it's got the heating element that will probably sit to about here, I assume. So we're going to have to isolate that, take that off, and see where we're at. So fortunately, we've got a fuse spur just on the other side of the wall here to isolate this. So I'll just disconnect this cable from inside there, take the rad, isolate the rad with the valves, take the valve, take the rad off, empty it out, and remake this fitting into here. So we shut the rad off on the valves, open it up, and just drain it down here. Drain it into the bowl, open the air vent at the top, release the water, and whip the rad off, remake that. stopping now so then we'll just undo this valve take the brackets off lift the rad off remake this fitting we've got to take it off because it's got a heating element in there which is going to go up to here so we can't unturn that off well i suppose i could i might be able to unturn it out tape it up in situ and put it back in yeah maybe i'll give that a go first off As I was saying, this goes up into the, the rad here. So what I'm going to try and do is just tape it up in, in situ here now to save taking it all off. So just tape it up, put some paste on it, see if I can make it in. If it doesn't work, I'll whip it off, but it should work. I shouldn't see a problem yet. Where you play old Russian roulette with the, uh, with the turns, yeah. You know, when it gets 
and it gets to the point you want it at, and you think, oh, have I got another turn, have I got another turn in there? Yep, so red filled up. I'll just clean that valve up now, but yeah, all good. Tightened it in. Job done. Underfloor heating. Right, so what we've got is this circuit here isn't getting warm. The pipe going out is, the flow is, the return's just a different colour and just stone cold. So I'm going to take that out and just see if there's any crap or whatever in there so i've isolated turned the heating off isolated the manifold what i'm going to do now is undo there let the pressure out of it remove this and just see if there's anything on that thermostatic power that's untoward because it's it has been working but it's just just stopped so we'll take that off and have a look so we've let the water pressure out of there we'll tighten that back up tight in there where the oh. right maybe it's just not working so it's just not lifting up I'll give it a spray and see what's wrong right. a few jobs of that house complete then so that's the shower screen sorted um, the, the towel rail that was leaking sorted and took, I say I took the valve out that um, underfloor heating manifold what I'm going to have to do is order a new valve a new thermostatic valve to go in there so that'll be on another video uh, I'll probably do a whole breakdown of how to change a, a thermostatic valve inside an underfloor heating manifold I think that's you know some of you might want to see that but right thanks for watching um, hit the subscribe button hit the like button thanks for all your your feedback on my other videos and that plenty more to come and i shall see you soon